CataractCoach.com, corneal laceration and lens puncture. You gotta repair the cornea and fix this traumatic cataract. Now this looks like a pretty young patient. You can see there is definitely a corneal laceration here. So using 10 nylon and closing that laceration. Now fortunately for the patient, it's not right in the center of the visual axis, but still will induce some irregular stigmatism as you suture this shut. Now, how deep do you place that suture? Well, you know, we've covered this on Cataract Coach and on Retina Rounds. RetinaRounds.com is our sister channel. You've got to check it out. So much great information. You will learn a lot, including how to fix these cases of ruptured globe. So you definitely need to subscribe to Retina Rounds, too. Now, if we want to pass that suture, let's say about 80% depth would be reasonable here. Now, getting the ends cut here using a sharp blade. And now you want to rotate that knot inside. I like that use of viscoelastic to make it a little bit more slippery to help lubricate that. That's what punctured the eye. Look at this filament, this wire. This is why you got to wear safety glasses, people, right? Now, making an incision here, you're going to have to put some tripan blue dye in. And now, lucky, there's no additional foreign body inside the eye. Both eyes were checked. And to your posterior segment, there is no retained foreign body. You just had that thing that was poking through the cornea and in the lens capsule. That's what the capsule looks like. Look at the break that we have already. How are you going to fix this now? Well, we're going to start to make some kind of rexus here. So you can poke in here in the capsule and try to bring it around. But you have an area that's already been radialized out. So you're going to have to be very cautious. Here. Now, of course, this is a very soft lens. I like how the surgeon is taking time to make a beautiful rexus here, a beautiful opening. You do as best as you can. Now, obviously, you have an irregular tear out to the periphery there. And that's not going to be addressed by just you doing a beautiful rex here. Again, that tripan blue dye is going to help you a lot to visualize it. Don't let this get too large of a rex here. Bring that in a little bit. And you can see it's a young patient. And the lens itself probably got swollen. As the lens caps was punctured, aqueous will go in there and kind of fluff up and swell up those lens proteins. So again, taking time here to get a really nice looking rexus, but it does want to run out. And so you want to grab onto that. Here's the little maneuver pulling backwards to bring that in. Beautifully done. Very, very nice. And then bring this thing around. Keep it going. Keep it going. Very good. And now you'll get a nice large opening here. Again, you don't need a huge rexus. This is not a dense nucleus. This is butter. You'll probably take the entire lens out with just the IA probe. I don't think you need a fake probe. But completing that lens capsule opening here, and again, I'm glad that we're just taking time to put in more viscoelastic and really make it as round as you can and as centered and as strong as you can, even though there is a radialized part of it. And how do you do the lens calc? Well, you can certainly calculate the patient's other eye. Measure both eyes if you can. And an eye like this, you could have measured it, but if the eye or the AC was flat at the time of, you really can't measure it as well as the other eye. So you can use the calculations of the other eye if you had any doubt, you could add a half or one diopter to the other the eye wall power because obviously it's better to be a little myopic here. And now putting the phaco probe in, you're going to aspirate this easily. Again, this is butter soft. You could just use the IA probe even here. And so again, you need to emphasize this patient. <laughs> you got to wear the safety glasses. When I do any work around my house, I am so crazy about wearing safety glasses. Why? We've seen all these cases in our own clinics. We're really cautious. Now, here you go, IA probe going inside the eye. I'd remove all the cortex from the strong areas first and then go near the weak area towards the end here. So nice and easy, taking time to do a good job here. And again, yeah, the lens calcs, I would use the other eye's eye wall calculations, maybe add a half diopter just to ensure the patient doesn't end up too hyperopic. And again, depending on the patient's work, if the patient's like a construction worker, perhaps maybe even add one diopter, a little bit more myopia because the patient needs to be able to see up close. But certainly this patient should be wearing safety glasses. And then here at the end, be very careful as you remove this. Sometimes a bimanual IA is easier because you don't want to inadvertently grab the anterior lens capsule where it ran out. See that area between the para and the main incision? You can see there's an area here where it has run out. So cleaning all this up here, Here's some more viscoelastic. Let's get the lens in the bag. I also like this incision, by the way. Three-piece lens just for more options. Remember the 7L rule, leading half to coming out like a number seven. That is correct. Optic opening up inside the eye. And the trailing haptic. Oh, get that flipped over. There we go. Cap, trailing ha haptic looks like the capital letter L. So overall, it's the anti-S. Remember, S. if the haptic looks like the letter S, S would be a stupid mistake. We don't want to make a stupid mistake. 
This is for stupid. Who went on that? So this is beautiful. Lens looks fantastic in great position, correctly oriented. And I like how that suture has actually held up beautifully throughout the case there. So notice there's been no leaking there. I would check everything at the end with fluorescence dye, do a Seidel test on the cornea just to make sure it's absolutely watertight. If not, put an extra suture. And those sutures are going to need to stay inside the eye for quite a long time. At least give it a couple months. Here at the end of the case, beautiful result. I hope the patient learned the lesson and is going to start wearing some safety glasses. Great case. Remember, check out our sister channel, retinarounds.com. So much great information and material, including how to fix a ruptured globe. Check it out.